Keisha Bisram, and you're listening to the Every Shade Podcast. I'm so excited to introduce to you my next guest and also my dear friend, Nikki Pope. Nikki Pope is a singer and songwriter with a passion for people and music. In October 2019, Nikki developed The Unsigned Artist, a safe space for musicians to grow and share their talents. The Unsigned Artist offers a video workshop that serves as a step-by-step visual guide for musicians looking to best position and promote themselves in the new digital age of music business. The Unsigned Artist also offers both online and in-person events to help musicians connect locally and internationally, to build a space for creatives to grow together, support one another, and to cheer each other on while working in this incredibly difficult industry. Thank you, Nikki, for doing this Every Shade podcast with me. I'm so happy that you're doing this interview with me because... I have so many questions for you and like I think watching your progression from starting with the unsigned artist even before then because I remember you were shooting out little like uh, messages on social media like I have something new that I'm going to share with you guys and I'm like what is oh she doing gosh. I remember all of it <laughs> I don't even remember that that's really and, funny um, yeah that's cool and what since you started and the progression that you've made especially during these times of the coronavirus um It's been very interesting to, like, I guess, watch you not just grow, but empower others, you know? So, um, again, thank you for doing this with me because I just feel like there's so many things I want to ask you and I'm just so excited to hear what you're going to say. What Uh, compelled you to start The Unsigned Artist in the very beginning? Do you know, I think what it was was that I was sort of reaching out to... You know, sort of, you know, Facebook groups that are dedicated to a specific thing. So I was reaching out to a lot of music and musicians and and music industry Facebook groups. It it was quite a toxic, like quite a a toxic place, you know, and I'm just not that kind of person. Like things really affect me. I, I, I take things, you know, as personal as I can before business comes in, in into play. And, and obviously as a musician, you're so vulnerable anyway. And so I, I saw this gap in the music industry and it was, um, it, it was something that was positive, a space of support. And even though they, they do exist, I wanted to create that community for myself. I wanted to see for myself that it wasn't this toxic space and you know and i wanted to be able to listen i don't claim to know everything um i can only give my experience as a musician and if i'm 10 percent further along the line than somebody coming up behind me and they can learn something from what i have to teach and what i have to offer then i've done my job and there are people that have had a lot more experience than me uh, but there are also people just starting out and to be able to give them rather than rather than an industry professional in the sense of a manager or an agent or someone in that sort of corporate capacity to give to put eyes on on um, an experience firsthand um, and to be able to speak to musicians on a similar level it felt like I, I just felt this need to create this community that could um, you know be a safe space for people to experiment and explore their talents and to connect with other musicians that are you know in a, in, the, in the same boat we're all in the same boat and I think that we we've had so many years through history of competing against each other that once we realize that we are on the same, our common ground is that we're all in this together. The The way that we can grow and um, seek that support and to give that support that you can to other people is to realize that the only way forward is to, to uh, lift each other up. 
And that's kind of where the unsigned artist was born from, uh, in the sense of wanting to give a community of artists a safe space to connect with each other, to share talents, and to just basically grow within each individual career, basically. Can you describe what that toxic space was? I I remember posting in because I was doing a lot of research for the unsigned artist because the unsigned artist, although it's a community, we also um, I've created a video workshop and it's for the independent musician teaching them how to best position and promote themselves within the music industry. Um, and it's about being able to reverse the roles of the key members within an artist's sort of dream team, as I say, um, to be able to reverse those roles, to be able to do it for yourself before you're at a point where you need that professional team. And, um, And so I was doing a lot of research as I was building this video workshop. And it meant that I was going into sort of Facebook groups and what it felt like was a lot of bitterness. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bitterness in these groups in the sense that... Were people like... I mean, when you say bitterness, is it competition, jealousy, or... Sure. Yeah. Exactly. So anything I would sort of put forward to someone asking them, you know, what is it that you feel stops you from reaching your goals as an artist? How how have you been trying to break into the music industry? Um, you know, what are your biggest pain points as a musician? All of these things that I was asking kept being met with um, negativity, mm-hmm. glass half empty, um, uh trolling you know really really unlike i just don't respond well to people that don't have a an open mind and an open heart to just let go and learn and grow from somebody else you know, to be able to explore. I wouldn't feel comfortable posting into these groups if I had a new music video out or something like that. And so, yeah, I really wanted to create. And and also, I think it's a case of um, just kind of going back a little bit. It was, a, it, it was a case of building a community that could connect both locally and internationally. So we have people from around the globe, a, a part of the Unsigned Artists now, and it's just been so incredible to watch you know I never really expected it to to be what it is today and it's a very you know we're a small but mighty group and uh, the one thing I'm going to start going off into different realms here so you'll have to to reel me in the one thing I do say about this community to people is that it's not the number of your followers it is how engaged your following is Mm -hmm. and so if I was to to get I think we're at something like over 1300 people uh for just through instagram you know if we were to have a room and put all 1300 of these people in the room that's a huge room all these people that have come to see you you know and and i think it's about sort of building this support network both locally and internationally which also brings in the in-person events as well that have had to halt because of the virus and stuff but yeah um, I've just totally spouted through your question, but no, no. Toxic, yeah, toxic groups, basically anything that I would approach them with was met with negativity, which just isn't something that I respond well to. First off, I, I like that you said that what's important is not your following, it's the engagement. Because yeah. we're all living in a social media world and as artists, business owners, entrepreneurs, so on and so forth, I think we do get caught up with the following and we end up putting out um, superficial information or posts or things like that where really what matters most is your quality because that's what really engages, um, you know, your following. But going back to the toxicity, you have a community that's worldwide pretty much Mm. and I'm sure you're 
having people coming in with um, a lot on their shoulders. Where do you think that negativity comes from? In terms of musicians in that world, like where does that come from? Well, the music industry in general is the most, I believe, I mean, I'm probably going to be met with um, someone that would disagree, but I believe is the most competitive industry there is, the arts, right? The arts are the most competitive industry. And and I think that that negativity stems from jealousy and competitiveness and um, this need to consistently be in the spotlight. I think there's um, the one other thing that I really try to stress is that once you change your mindset on whatever your goals are with creating success, like what does success look to you? What does it look like to you? You know, is that selling out worldwide tours in arenas or is it making money through music and having the flexibility to live a fulfilled life with a family? You know, it's it's whatever success looks like to you or whatever will make you happiest, you know? And I think that that is what is most important. And yeah, you're following, if you're constantly chasing numbers, where is your energy? Like your energy isn't in the right, you're not prioritizing um, what is most important. And that is creating music that you're passionate about, right? That's creating art that sparks you up. That's the stuff that inspires you. You know, and if you're a part of our community, let's say, for example, with um, throughout the lockdown, I thought you have to, I think at the very beginning, um, an online business in any any sense, an online brand, an online, you, it was all very much pivot your message because no one knew what to do. Everything was being cancelled left, right and centre. We had, uh, I had 41 cities booked in on a tour for the unsigned artists because right before lockdown, we were going to different cities, we did New York, London, Leicester, Cardiff, and we had 41 cities lined up. We haven't done one yet, you know, for, for 2020. And so then it was all about, right, how can we bring the community together that, um, you know, can lift each other up, can lift the world up, not just each other. This is how do we, uh, you know, we're going through some really difficult times. And so that's when everything sort of went online and we were live streaming stuff. And so I created um, the Unsigned Artist Sofa Sessions and it's blown up from there. Like I've literally, I can't tell you how many more. I think we, before lockdown, I'm pretty sure we had like 300 followers and now we've like increased by about a thousand so it's been pretty insane really to think that what we're actually doing is building our community more and more because of these sessions and it's been just crazy to watch things grow and expand and it's been such an exciting experience and to have been a part of it even just a small part i'm so grateful that the amount of compassion that I get from this community on the daily. Like I have random people messaging me daily saying, thank you for creating. And I never expected that. Never, ever, ever. And it's just so, um, so fulfilling. So fulfilling. It's definitely been one of the best things that I've done in my career was to create this community. And one thing I appreciate about the unsigned artist is the fact that you have created this positive community. I think, I think this idea of, you know, collaboration over competition has always proved to be more successful in my opinion. <laughs> and, no, absolutely. And what I see on your social media page and on the unsigned artist is I I'm seeing that every artist is so different from one another, from their style, 
from what they look like, from where they're coming from, you know, it's a very diverse group that you're extracting from this negative space, which by the way, I really appreciate that you were able to, I think from a negative um, hub, you were able to extract something positive out of it and basically build off that for people. Because I think, I mean, especially with what's going around this year with the coronavirus, people are so focused on the negativity, which... By the way, mm. negative outcomes happen and it's horrible and it sucks and <laughs> they're facts mm. and they do affect everyone in the worst possible way. But on the other side, there are positives to it. And how, how do you work from that? You have drawn such a diverse community from all around the world, um, different musicians as well. And, you know, you as a musician and I guess uh, as a business owner as well, I mean, is there something that you have learned from your community that you were not expecting? Maybe both as a musician and also as a business owner. I know there's two different sides to it. Um, Okay, so I guess as a musician, what I've learned from my community is, you know, I feel like I'm, it's not, it's not a one-way street. Like I'm, I'm learning things from them too. And I'm the type of person that's not, not too proud to learn. I feel like I'm a student of life. I feel like Marie Folio said that once, but like, I feel like I'm a student of life in the sense that like, I'm, I, I, like I said earlier, I'm not, I don't claim to know everything and I never have done, but I feel like, you know, I'm watching as, I have a certain way to release music as a, as a musician, talking as a musician. Um, and I'm always learning uh, how to progress and do that better. And, you know, I'm watching my community or this community and seeing how they do it too, you know, releasing music, launching offers, building their email list and you know that sparks ideas for me and as as best as I can I try and highlight that throughout and really do create that sort of um collaborate yeah collaboration over competition and so you know I'm learning things as a music as a musician every day I've created some incredible friends as well through the inside artist um you know and I've I've had the opportunity to meet a good portion of them as well um And so I would say I'm learning something from them every day about this industry, as well as being able to offer something in the sense of uh, that the um, step-by-step method that I use and that has worked for me in the past. As a business owner, um, what am I learning from the community? As a business owner, I feel... Well, I'm a new business owner. I've only ever been sort of self-employed and I've only had to consider myself. But now I feel like I have a duty of being uh, almost like a duty of care to to the artists within the community. And in response to, you know, if they're asking me for help, I have to be able to give them my best and i feel like that's that's a heavy weight to carry that's a heavy weight to carry because it's not just nikki the musician that's nikki the business owner that's nikki the 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 teacher you know and that's a lot that's a lot to carry but i do enjoy it and i feel that i've learned how to pivot my message and learn how to roll with the waves in the first year of, I mean, talk about building a business in in the in the middle of a pandemic, you know, chaos. But it feels good and it feels right. And I'm not here to say it's going to be perfect every time, but it feels good to me. And I feel like I'm I'm doing right by my community mm-hmm. as best as I can. For the musicians that are in your community during this coronavirus i mean you started when did you start on the unsigned artist again what unsigned artist was october October. 2019 right so this is obviously a time when nobody knew the virus was happening obviously because it didn't even exist but Mm -hmm. how were you able to 
and I, I've seen you do it on social media. You do it so well. When the virus happened and the lockdowns happened, the quarantine happened and so on and so forth, how were you able to c- continually uplift your community without that foundation breaking apart? Again, I think it's about moving back to that positive space. Like in, in de- like daily life, I'm a very glass half full type of person um and quite stubborn with it as well like i feel like i've always been the type of person to look on the positive side of life because really negativity it's a wasted emotion it's a wasted action right you there's nothing good that comes from being negative that you can't progress or grow from there and so i think it was definitely it was definitely about it was a definitely about taking each day as it comes because as like everybody else, you, you we just had no idea what this was going to entail. We didn't know what was going to happen. And so I think it was very much a case of, um, I remember during, uh, during sofa sessions, one of the early artists said, because uh, I asked everybody at the beginning, that at the end or at the beginning of their um, song was to give a few words of wisdom to try and lift people's spirits during this time. And, and someone said something really easy to me. And I was like, huh, yeah, that's perfect. Is just open the window. And I remember being like, gosh, that's so simple, but so true. If you just open the window and let the fresh air come in and let the hot air flow out, it kind of felt like a metaphor for the situation we were going through. Um, And it was funny, at the very, very beginning of the year, I created a course called 2020, Your Best Year Yet. And it was literally weeks before it all came out. And it was in the first two weeks of January. Yeah. And so as soon as the lockdown hit, um, I thought, right, twist and and work. So I I called up a friend of mine who I'd met at um, BBC Introducing Live, which is a um, festival of uh, like an exhibition uh, convention, if you like, for musicians. And... um, she was, um, her name is Sital Pansar, and she was, she's a musician, a music industry therapist. And I said, we've got to get together and give everybody a webinar that was based around how we can survive financially, mentally and physically throughout um, the lockdown and how this webinar was called uh, 2020 still your best year yet and um you know and i just think that i mean you were a part of that so like you kind of saw how what kind of came out of that and that was almost like a testament like people were active in there they were talking and really wanted the information and so i think it was just about going with the flow and making sure that you're just constantly bringing high energy and a positive space for support and you know so many people had messaged um had messaged just to say thank you and even just for the sofa sessions because it's just been a way or an outlet or a way to express but the other way the other thing that i kept saying to everybody was it's okay to not feel creative you know it the, there's this pressure of oh you've got all the time in the world should be creating an album that's not how this works and if you're not there as you know as an as a creative you you cannot force uh you cannot force inspiration you can't force creativity it's just got to come when it's ready to come and if that's not if that's not you right now you can't feel guilty for that your time will come so- i can't even remember your first question <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, the question was in relation to how did you uplift your community during, during the shift of the coronavirus or when it happened. (laughs) And I guess what I want to ask you was, because what you mentioned that, oh, we have all this time in the world, like you have to create, blah, blah. As an artist, whoever you are, like as an artist out there, whether you're a musician, actress, sculptor, painter, poet, you know, poet, there's this drive to yes to always create and to express 
But then there's this also, we force ourselves to create because we seek some sort of validation on the outside, whether it is to get hired by someone, to be cast in a film, to, you know, create an album, things like that. And my question to you is, you obviously are getting a lot of artists to you in your community who are coming with problems. Do you, what's your opinion about what is our external problem? Is it the industry? Is it the competition on so- social media? Is it ourselves? Do you see a mix of all three? That. Do you see that there, is there one that kind of overpowers the other or like, what's your opinion on that? I think in regards to success, it always, your blocks are mainly always within yourself. Because I believe that if you work hard enough or you have enough self-belief in your, I'm going to talk about it like product because as creatives, we are products, we sell ourselves. I believe that if you don't fully believe in your product as you, then who else is going to? Mm. Who else is going to believe that they should give you a chance if you don't even believe it yourself? And even when we're sort of like spouting all the good stuff, it's really obvious when you're not your most authentic self. And I think that, um, I think that that's something we're all learning. You know, I, I, I suffer from it too. I remember doing the workshop and it was my first workshop and and literally the camera goes on i'm like hi hey Lily. you know it's like very you know so i'm constantly learning as well in myself that authenticity sells like if you believe in your product whatever that is that is what's gonna if you if you genuinely feel excited by whatever you're creating the music you're creating the art you're creating um the the script you just wrote you know that is the biggest key component or key factor for seeing success that's in my eyes i mean yes of course there are um there are factors within the industry the industry is definitely not perfect and definitely plays its part in putting roadblocks in the way and obstacles in the way for people um but we are becoming a more independent uh, nation, if you like, a more independent, creative nation. Like people are do have the opportunity to create work now. It's not on someone else's time, um, you know. And it's like it's it's just like this: podcasts, YouTube. Um, you know, it, it's all about breaking down those barriers and success. I believe, I believe personally comes from be comes from within. Um, and then the rest, you know, that's where you start to sort of seek out help. Um, and I, yeah, I think that that's, I think it's a bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. I do agree that I think, I think what outweighs all of it is ourselves because I feel like every artist suffers from that. I mean, Obviously, the industry plays its role and the world plays its role. But at the end of the day, it's it's really the only person that can really believe in yourself is yourself. Yeah. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you, you will not move forward at all yeah. or grow or any of those things. It just nothing will happen. Yeah. For the unsigned artist, because the title is called The Unsigned Artist, <laughs> yeah. is your, so I know you talked about you, you, you're you creating this communal space for everyone to have an outlook, to share, to practice, to grow, um, so on and so forth. You have these workshops. Is your goal to get these artists signed or is that not the goal at all? Is, do you have a specific goal for each person or for the community itself? Like, What is... I don't want to use the word end goal because it just sounds like when you don't want someone, you're done. That's not the case for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, me personally, it, the goal is not to be signed. Mm. The goal is, you know, like we look at someone like Stormzy. He's only just signed. Like, you know, like he, I believe nowadays, like, yes, don't get me wrong. You know, 90, oh, goodness me, uh, 97% of musicians that get signed will be dropped because they don't recoup their advance. So really, we are, we have more control when we're unsigned. 
we have uh, we, we have the way to distribute everything now on our own terms. And if you, yeah, like I think it's just about being able to wear all the hats, to be able to be your own manager. I know that's that, that that's the one that's more difficult. You have to be really, really good at um, organization and prioritizing things um, to be your own manager, of course. Uh, but, you know, in regards to like agents and publicist and distribution, like we can do all of that stuff ourselves. And so it's just about being so utterly prepared. And so I don't believe that, like in, in general for me, my goal is not to be signed unless it's on my terms, mm, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that that will differ for everybody. That's, you know, whatever is when you really nail down what do I want from my career, it's there, there's going to be different for everybody. And it's when you really nail down your truth, then I think that that is the most empowering and the most fulfilling thing that you can do for yourself. I find that so interesting that your goal is to, to stay unsigned because yeah. I think as artists, we're always running towards the industry example. Mm. And my question to you is, do you, in your, in your workshops and um, when you talk to your the, uh, the musicians in your workshops and and on social media, do you use industry examples such as like Celine Dion, Ariana Grande, so on and so forth? Do you use them as examples or do you stray away from that? Because I, the, the reason why I'm asking that question, I don't mean to cut you off, but the reason why mm. I ask you that question is because I think as artists, like teachers and workshops are always using oh, look what Leonardo DiCaprio's doing. Look what, you know, Rihanna's doing. Look what Zac Efron's doing. And it's like, why are we looking at these people? Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I think, um, sorry, I've just cut you off. Okay. <laughs> um, but I've got a brain like a sieve, so if I don't say it, it ain't coming out. Um, but basically, I, so on social media, I, I can refer back to artists, but it's usually what happened before they got famous if I'm doing almost like a little bit of a case study. But um, in regards to, so I highlight independent artists. I highlight people that have, you know, it's only a small percentage of people that make it to that big. And whether that's even the greatest position to be, I'm not sure. Like there are so many success stories of people that we've heard of you know, that um, that we should be following them. Like, look at Macklemore as well. Like, they, they did so well as well before they even, you know, they they even got signed. I think they were actually one of the first people, weren't they? Um, and there's a few other people that are completely jumping my mind right now. But if you, if you look at some of um, the more independent routes that people take, you know, everything's on their terms, their control. They're not being, they're not tied to, um, you know, making, it's all all about the budget, to make the budget back, you know. It's, yeah, I think that the, the yeah, I think it's about highlighting people that are more on our level, that are, that, that have followed the footsteps from where we are. And um, if I do refer to them, then it's about what happened before they got there probably most of the time. I really love that because I feel like you're giving back power and strength to mm. these artists that, that, that are um, with the unsigned well, artists. I think, sorry, I really believe that like um, that's what we need to aim for. As independent musicians, we need to realize that we do have the power. We do have the power because we now have the stages for it. We have Spotify, we have iTunes, uh, Apple Music, we have um, iTunes, we have uh, all of these different avenues are open to us now and we need to step into that position of power to a degree. We need to we need to know that we can do it by ourselves and like I've said, going back to the beginning, that, um, that small but mighty following, as long as we're working towards an engaged following, then, um, you know, that, that really is is the end result when you can curate a space 
that is truly yours and people appreciate your music, that's your win-win. Yeah, because I, 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 I get the sensation that you're allowing this space for artists to stay authentic. Because mm. I... And I'm, I'm pretty sure you've experienced this too, you know, sometimes when you're in a class or a workshop, you always hear the lead teacher talking about all these examples that have already succeeded, but they're always mm -hmm. talking about the end result. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we're driven to believe that we need to get to that end result right now or tomorrow yeah. or in the next five minutes <laughs> mm -hmm. with yeah. anything that we create. And I think that steals that authentic part of ourselves away or we just mute it down or we just push it back down we don't pay attention to it and what i love about the unsigned artist from what i see what you're doing is you're you're allowing this platform to exist for people to stay authentic and true and how to empower that for themselves you know well the the exper the um the journey is the most fulfilling part right and if we rush the journey then you know how can we truly be um enjoying the results right if it comes too quick how can we truly appreciate the work that's got into it yeah um, and yeah i think that that's i think that's important to keep checking in and to realize that that the that the milestones that you hit are because of you and the work that you're putting into it and the 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 fans that you're you're curating the fans that you know are attracted to you because of your music and what you have to offer that small corner of the internet that you own mm -hmm. so i know you said earlier that the unsigned artist is taking things day by day what's what's in store for the unsigned artist for its future so obviously we've had to sort of pivot a little bit <laughs> yeah but um but I'm so excited because when the time comes to be open back up, to be able to open back up to our in-person events, then I have a whole sort of new structure for that. We're going to try and get speakers into each one, just so that people are getting a little bit more for their um, for their time with us. And so, alongside the in-person events, we've got a bunch of new online stuff kicking off. We've still got our sofa sessions. And um, we're going to be running a lot more sort of competitions and giveaways and really pushing our services and products. Because right now we're just sort of community building and learning about each other and enjoying each other's space, taking this year for what it is. And then um, once, once we've got a little bit more of a structure as to what's happening in person, uh, we're just going to keep moving along and, and running more webinars and running like I say, these giveaways and we're just going to start monthly raffles for the workshop um, and just to, yeah, really get to know each other. And I really want to build that really connected uh, community of people and talent. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nikki, for doing this interview. I Hi. really, really appreciate it. Um, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. You're my first podcast interview for the Inside Artist. Oh my God, that's so exciting. Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening to Nikki's experience as the owner of the Unsigned Artist. Don't forget to follow the Dark Brown channel to find out more information about the Unsigned Artist and future episodes on the Every Shade podcast.